Passenger. David here. Beauty here. Kuzikowski here. here. Super here. Chandler here. Item two is minutes of the August 23rd meeting. Dickman makes a motion that we approve the minutes of the August 23rd, 2016 meeting. Secret seconds. Roll call. Dickman, aye. Johnson abstains. Brillo, aye. Avich, aye. Uh, I think it was at that meeting. Scafidi, aye. Zikowski, aye. Brillo, aye. Secret, aye. Chandler, aye. Item three is significant common council actions carry. Council approved the following, an ordinance amending the general development plan and regulating plan for the Drexel Town Square mixed-use plan development district at 7940 South 6th Street, 7901 South Main Street, and 7902 South Main Street. Also an ordinance approving a conditional use permit, allowing a fin financial institution with drive-through, drive-up facility located at 7940 South 6th Street. Also a resolution consenting to the assignment of tax incremental district number 10, Finance Development Agreement from Bucyrus, Wisconsin Property LLC, to Master Law Company LLC, and approving a First Amendment to Tax Incremental District Number 10 Finance Development Agreement. Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Carrie. Moving on to new business. Item A is a condition, a review of conditions and restrictions for a conditional use permit request for housing for the elderly submitted by the City of Oak Creek and the Waters Senior Living, senior living on the property at 8000 South Market Street, tax key number 813-9065. Carrie. While this comes up, this is for the conditions and restrictions for the senior and elderly housing. The conditional use permit was recommended for approval at the August 23rd meeting. And the, the parcel that we are talking about is actually right across the street at 8000 South Market Street. Uh, proposed conditions and restrictions have been provided for the Commission's consideration. Basically, these are uh, standard conditions and restrictions that take into account the location within Drexel Town Square. So we have things such as build to zone, landscape zone, mixed building and landscape zone requirements, uh, parking in accordance with DTS requirements, uh, signage that will be approved at a later date, lighting, landscaping, everything that has to go along with approval within Drexel Town Square, including glazing and building materials. This is for one senior and elderly housing development within the DTS mixed use district. Staff's recommendation is that the plan commission recommends that the Common Council adopt the conditions and restrictions as part of the conditional use permit allowing for the development of senior and elderly housing at 8000 South Market Street after a public hearing. Mr. Mayor. Any questions on item 4A? Mr. Dickman. Uh, carry on item uh, Five maintenance and operation, and I, this, these may have been here before and other ones, I haven't noticed it, but it says that uh, items that are acceptable to the City of Oak Creek Plan Commission and one Drexel LLC and items A, B, and C, and how do we get into this act here? I mean, you know, did they come to us? Or is, I, I've never seen that before. Uh, maintenance and operation would be such things like uh, location of dumpsters, number of dumpsters, uh, the snow removal and things like that, that's all handled by private development. So the maintenance and operation, this is taken directly from uh, the Drexel Town Square Mixed Use Plan Development District Regulating Plan. Um, basically what it says is the Plan Commission has the authority to approve of certain items within the maintenance and operation of the property. Okay, thank you. Other questions? Mr. Siebert. Yeah, I've, excuse me, I'm number four, parking. Are they going to have any underground parking or is it going to be above ground parking? At this point, I do not have plans. I cannot recall whether or not uh, they have gone for underground parking. We are expecting to receive plans in the next week. Okay. Thank you. Welcome. Anyone else? Seeing no more questions, I need a motion on 4A. Come on up, Mr. Degner. Arden Degger, 8540 South Pennsylvania Avenue. I'm wondering if this is a, if this is the best use of this property that the city owns, because if you see the other buildings surrounding our civic center, four stories high, our civic center is lost, and particularly from this direction. The uh, Howell Avenue uh, 
direction with the Myers affords a low level sight angle so that at least the uh, tower, clock tower would be seen of City Hall so that uh, individuals that are trying to find City Hall and the library will be able to find it visually. And to me, something four stories high would have to be located in an area that does not obstruct the, the uh, City Hall and Civic Center. I fail to see that this is the type or the height of a type of development that we want in, in this planned development. Are we going to plan that the city amounts to something? Or are we going to hide it? Which is what you're trying to do now. You're going to hide it behind four stories? I don't understand it. This, is, this should be redone. Thank you. Thanks for your comments. Anybody else have any questions or comments? Motion on 4A. David shall make a motion that the Planning Commission recommend that the Common Council adopts the conditions and restrictions as part of the conditional use permit, allowing for the development of a senior elderly housing at 8000 South Market Street after a public hearing. Roll seconds. Roll call. Hickman, aye. Johnson, aye. Roll aye. David, aye. Scooty, aye. Zikowski, aye. Roll aye. Sheepard, aye. Item 4B is a uh, review of site building, landscaping, <laughs> lighting plan submitted by Mark Tigrutinus, HSA Commercial, for an addition to the approved health clinic facility on the property at 7901 South 6th Street, tax key number 813-9056, carry. This proposal is for phase two of the development, which is the cancer center addition. Um, we have... portion that we're looking at is actually on the southeastern portion of the approved building, which is outlined in red here, and I will zoom in so that you can get a better idea of what the proposed addition encompasses. It's a one and a half story addition with possible future roof build out on the southeast corner. As a reminder, there are build two zones and mix, mixed land building and landscape zones along 6th Street and the entrance location. Parking um, for, the, for the property was changed slightly due to the expansion of the building. Uh, there was also a slight reduction. If you'll recall, at the original building permit or the building plans included um, 212 or 225 surface parking stalls and 425 in the parking garage. The slight reduction is now 212 surface parking stalls. However, um, 546 would be required based on the plans. 637 are provided overall on the property. There was a change to the proposed landscape plans that were included in your packets. The slight change is to this patio area that's on the southeast corner. Originally, it had been for a hard surface with a couple of trees um, next to the building. There was a concern raised by the applicant that there would be some unsupervised, uh, the potential for unsupervised activity in a corner there. So the change is to instead of having a, a hard surface patio area, it would all be landscaped and the Four purple areas down here would be benches for seating with some uh, pedestrian level bollards in between. So this would be a change for the plan commission to consider. The addition overall is about 16,299 square feet on two levels again, or a story and a half. Uh, the largest portion obviously would be on the first floor and this is also showing the future roof expansion. If we go to the elevations, they're using basically the same materials uh, with one exception. Um, 
They are striated precast panels, striated metal panels, smooth finish metal panels, and corrugated metal screening for the mechanicals. Also using tinted and spandrel glass in specific locations. Uh, we mentioned that during the previous review of these plans for patient confidentiality and some programming requirements. <coughs> On the eastern facade, you'll notice that a majority of this elevation includes Prodema natural wood beauty panels and a rain screen. Uh, the reason I bring these up is because per the Drexel Town Square mixed use plan development, um, general development plan, wood and architectural metal panels are allowed as secondary and accent materials. Corrugated metal screening is not listed as a material that can be used at street level. Um, the use of wood as a primary building material on the east elevation and corrugated metal screening will require three quarter majority approval. The tinted glazing and opaque glass are also prohibited except as accents, however, again, based on programmatic and privacy needs of the, of the facility, staff recommends approval of the tinted and spandrel glass as presented. There is one recommendation that staff um, mentioned to the applicant's consultants, and that's to include bike racks somewhere on the site um, for the increased multimodal use of Drexel Town Square that we're trying to promote. An elevation giving you an idea of what the east side would look like. The top portion is from uh, going west on Drexel. And the lower photo is a view from 6th Street. 6th Street looking west on the east. Staff's recommendation is that the Plan Commission approves the site and building plan submitted by Mark T. Grutenheis. HSI commercial for the property located at 7901 South 6th Street, subject to conditions 1 through 9. Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Carrie. Open it up to the commission for questions or comments. Commissioner Chandler. Uh, Carrie, quick question. For one of the recommendations, <clears throat> it was to add a door to access the patio. Can you provide a little more information? Yeah, that actually was a comment for the original um, layout of the patio. That was before this change to all landscaping, so that recommendation is no longer applicable. Thank you. And then I have a question for the applicant. In regards to the ceiling, there is natural wood beauty. When you Do come you have up, a sample? When you come up, please identify. Name and address for the record. Sure. Uh, Mark Groton Hayes, HSA Commercial Real Estate. Uh, I might defer to my architect for specific questions about. Do you have any samples? Because I don't recall this wood being placed on any other location in this building. Hi, T.J. Morley with Epstein U and Architects. Please be seated. Um, this is a new material that's being introduced to the project. Um, basically, as a accent to this particular element in the building to transition from 6th onto the site. We thought it made more sense to bring this material into the project to soften that facade as well. It is a natural wood veneer product. It's a commercial grade product, so it is a long lasting material. Um, it's effective to keep the stain from the floor as well. Um, and it's quite beautiful. I actually have a, happen to have a photograph of, of the image if you'd like to see that. Otherwise And is this the only surface of the entire building that would have Correct. wood? Okay. Thank you. I actually like the, uh, the, at least from the 6th Street view, the kind of stepping up with the three different applications. I think that looks pretty cool and looks nice. So I'm, I'm glad that you were able to mix that up. Um, this side. Commissioner Dickman and Alder Mikhevich. Uh That patio area that uh, they made the change to, in, in other words, before... You could use the door, which is not there now, I agree. And then people could come from the inside out and sit in that area before. But now you're closing it off, so it's, it's more or less for people from the outside to sit or if they want to walk out the front door and sit there. Is that true for, for smoking or something? Um, if I may, Wally, actually, yeah, uh, no. The original plan was for it to be a patio area that did not have a door. Uh, staff's recommendation was to include a door so that people from the inside of the proposed addition okay. could access that patio. But for um, 
for some concerns raised by the applicant, my understanding is that they no longer want that to be a patio area. It will all be all be landscaping with benches along the um, sidewalk there. Okay, side, okay. Right. So that's where the seating will be. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Is that a public use sidewalk? Or is that on their property? It's on their okay. property. I'm just was curious. Yeah. And that that sidewalk would then go to the parking structure. No, Eventually. the side. Well, the sidewalk follows the the building. If I zoom out here, it it's accessed off of Sixth, so it does connect to the public infrastructure, but it goes around the building, and stops here. But there is a crossing to the okay. parking structure. All right. You know the the patio is, would have been nice, but um, you know, frankly, we have plenty of green space where people can can hang out. So not that really worried worried about it. Anything else, Wally? No, thank you. Alderman Bukavich. Uh, very quickly on the wood, I really don't have a problem. I agree with the mayor. It kind of breaks up the building. It adds a little different touch to it. I think it's well done. Uh, as long as it's maintained and it's good material, I'm good with that. Uh, just on the parking, I don't have much heartburn on reducing that 650 to 637. You guys mentioned parking on the street coming in between Emerald Row, that that parking would be shared on the street between Emerald Row and Ferry Road itself. Is that open to public or... Is that considered a private road at this point is the question. And then my, th my third comment is we're putting in a lot of impervious pavement here. Uh, and I guess this kind of goes to Commissioner Johnston. Uh, water, we're all good. Everything is ponds are adequate, or do they have to accommodate that? No, it was all originally designed to accommodate their, their whole build out, so we don't need additional. Okay, thank you. Parking question. Uh, anyone, anyone want to talk about the parking issue, uh, staff? The parking along the the access there was intended to provide some additional on-street parking that was identified in the general development plan and regulating plan for DTS. Um, it's, I don't think it's been um, reserved, shall we say, for anybody in particular, but that is a, it's a, it's a public road up to a certain point. I'm not sure. I don't recall where that point ends. Brian, maybe you could help. It's a public road along along Sixth Street. The city does have access agreements in place for that road, and maintenance responsibilities for that road. It's intended to be used for that. Uh, I take it all deliveries, and I don't know if we'll have ambulances or a different type of healthcare facility. That'll come up through that service road pre Sixth Street. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, that's correct. That's the intent. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Mr. Chandler? For the parking structure, can anyone park there from any of the other buildings? Um, my understanding is uh, we have an agreement with uh, the city uh, through the clerk's office that for major public events, it's open to the public. Thank you. And we, uh, it, you know, it raises the issue of parking. We're all aware that parking... Uh, will be a change for Oak Creek people and maybe even some of the people that aren't from Oak Creek that come here, but uh, it's it's an adjustment. Um, it's accelerated because of what's happening in the uh, Main Street area along with all the construction stuff that's going on that should ease fairly soon. Um, I know having aldermen on both sides of me, we're talking about some alternative lots that will be uh, made available as soon as possible. So we're all aware of it, but in most of these cases, most of the developments will have um, an agreement that spells out when we have those special events, we are able to access it. So that was really important, and I, I thank Freighter and HSA for making that happen. Any other questions? Commissioner Dickman. Uh, on item five here, as far as staff recommendations, says the wall sign location on the east <coughs> elevation as proposed is not approved. The applicant tenant may submit a sign appeal request you know, for that sign. Uh, are you planning on doing that, if I might ask? Have you discussed it? Uh, yes, we are. We, we've we uh, walked through the process of uh, getting permission to have that signage, and uh, I think it's appropriate signage. It's just, I think it's the way the sign ordinance is drafted at this time. We have to go through that process. So. Okay. Thank you, Commissioner Dickman. I don't see anybody else. Uh, motion on 4B. David shall make a motion that the plan commission approve the site and building plan submitted by Mark. Oh boy, help me with the name. I don't want to.
butcher that. You can say it. Just Mark T is fine. Okay. <laughs> uh, Mark Tagunas, uh, HSA commercial for the property located at 7901 South 6 with the following conditions. One, that all building and fire codes are met. Two, that all conditions of approval issued for the main building on May 10th, 2016 remain effective. Three, that all revised plans, site, building, landscape, et cetera, are submitted in digital and paper formats for review and approval by the Department of Community Development prior to the submission of building permit applications. Four, that detailed plans for signage are reviewed and approved by the Plan Commission prior to the submission of signed permit applications. Five, that the wall sign location on the east elevation as proposed is not approved. The applicant tenant may submit a sign appeal or request for the proposed signs on east elevations. Six, that all mechanical equipment, ground, building, and rooftop is screened from view. Seven, that final photometric and lighting plans indicate indicating the approved luminaire type, pole type, color, and height for Drexeltown Square are submitted for a final approval by the Director of Community Debe Development upon written recommendation of the electrical inspector prior to the issuance of building permit. Eight, that the plans addressing grading draining stormwater quality, including the use of stormwater best management practice to be approved by the city engineer prior to the issuance of building permits, and nine, that all water and sewer utility connections are coordinated with the Oak Creek Water and Sewer Utility Commission. Mr. Kelly's kill second. Roll call. Dick Manai. John Stenai. Chandler I. David Chai. Speedy I. Mr. Kowski. Roll I. Cheaper and I. Chandler I. Move forward. Thank you. And the final item tonight is a plan review of site building landscaping lighting plan submitted by Kelly Gallagher, Self Storage Ventures LLC for a self storage facility on the properties at 6304 and 6340 South Hall Avenue and 137147 and 209 East College Avenue. Tax key numbers as listed. Carrie. Site building and landscaping and lighting approval for all of the buildings proposed for the self storage facility. The conditional use permit was approved by the council in July. This is the proposed layout. Uh, the site plan includes two interior exterior unit buildings which are labeled as buildings A and B, six traditional exterior access buildings labeled as C. Building B will be two stories with an office on the northeast corner. Uh, there was a Board of Zoning Appeals hearing at which point the applicant was granted a variance to the north property line. We will discuss a couple of um, proposed modifications uh, in just a moment to these buildings. Um, property line setbacks have been met with the Board of Zoning Appeals uh, granting of a variance for that north property line. All other property line setbacks, height limits, and maximum lot coverage are met in these plans. You'll notice that the driveway lo locations have been modified slightly from the plans that were reviewed at the conditional use permit uh, application review. There's now no longer any access onto Howell Avenue. The two access points will be off of College Avenue, and those need to be reviewed and approved by the county. Parking requirements were reduced during the conditional use permit review. You'll recall that a minimum of five by the office location were required uh, with one per employee. Uh, as a reminder, parking must be 30 feet from all rights of way. There are proposed fencing locations on the property at the access points with gates. Um, along the western property line that will go to, between the buildings and to a retaining wall on the south, southwest corner. And then around the south and east sides, there will be um, chain link fence in a black nylon color. There are no trash enclosures that are proposed at this time. Landscape plans were reviewed originally by the Forester. There have been some revisions that were received on September 2nd that will need to be reviewed again. Some revisions are required, um, some of them being uh, relocation of proposed trees in a uh, utility easement. Staff will continue to work with the applicant on revisions that are necessary to these landscape plans. And as a reminder, all utilities need to be screened. Before we move on to the elevations, there is a there there was a discussion that ha occurred today regarding the utility easement on the north and the proposed location of the buildings. We are very happy to announce that we have come to an agreement. At which point, the building A northern portion will be reduced by five feet 
to be outside of the utility easement area. So these plans will be modified slightly from what you are reviewing tonight. However, staff is comfortable with the proposed reduction in order to meet that requirement. And the applicant's equally comfortable? Yes, this was made in conjunction with the applicant. And the applicant indicated a thumbs up. Building materials are proposed for the, all of the buildings. Um, the two main buildings will include brick split face flock split faced block. That's hard to say. Wainscoting, uh, textured insulated metal panels, non-insulated metal panels will be used on the C buildings. Um, there is a metal canopy that's proposed as an accent on the northeast corner of the building B for the office. And there are EFIS cornices proposed on the masonry corners. Materials percentages per elevation and per building were provided in your packets as well as on the plans. Per the approved conditions and restrictions, a minimum of 50% of the visible perimeter shall be finished with an acceptable glass brick or de decorative masonry material. I pointed out in the, in the staff report that there are a few portions of the buildings that do not meet this requirement. Staff is working with the applicant in order to make sure that those percentage of materials is increased to meet that minimum requirement. Um, and one more uh, addition on that building material is that the brick needs to be four inches per code, four inch depth. There are a couple of sign locations that were identified on the plans. Sign plans will be reviewed by the plan commission at a later date. This just gives you an overall view of what the buildings would be looking, uh, looking like. Uh, this gives you an idea of where those building percentage material breakdowns were provided. Was trying to get there we go there is the uh, proposed rendering of the northwest corner there is one response wait that staff is re waiting for on the proposed stormwater plans and staff will continue to work with the applicant to ensure that all questions regarding those plans are addressed the staff recommendation is that the plan commission approves the site and building plans for the self-storage development located at 6304 and 6340 south howell avenue and 137, 147, and 209 East College Avenue, subject to conditions that were proposed with one exception, and that is that condition number one will have to be reworded due to the Board of Zoning Appeals received decision that the setback to the north property in line was approved. When the, uh, when the person that makes the motion makes the motion, just add that language. Will do. Okay. All set? Difficult um, property for lots of reasons. Um, sat empty for decades. Uh, looking at what I see here and having probably had more discussions on this pro uh, project than I had on Ikea, I'm uh, glad that we're getting towards the finishing stages. I think it looks great. I think it's a great use of that site, obviously. I, I still am intrigued by the, the fact that the applicant's willing to step up and put a city monument sign at the front of their property. I think that says something as well, and I, I appreciate that. Um, it would give us book-ended Oak Creek, welcome to Oak Creek signs on both sides of the street, which is nice. Uh, at this point, I'll open it up to the council, or the commission for any questions. Alder McKevich. Uh, just a comment and then a question. I have to agree with the mayor. It's kind of odd to say I'm excited over a storage facility, but I really am. I do think it's a good use of the very challenging property. That nobody's been able to do anything with for a number of years. And, uh, I actually really kind of like the layout of the whole thing. Um, my question is actually to Assistant Chief Kresic. Uh, obviously, the buildings are going to fire, uh, follow fire code, uh, fire pumps, and what have you, and they're sprinkled. <coughs> are the units themselves sprinkled, or do you need hydrants within the within the facilities for the the outer buildings, the C type? Mike Kresic, Fire Department. Uh, without any building plans currently in hand on each of the structures, we wouldn't be able to make a determination on fire suppression needs. Now, obviously, the Fire Department's recommendation is that the structures are sprinkled, but we will work within the confines of the code along with the applicant to determine what needs uh, for each particular building based on square footage, stories, uh, those types of items. Each 
There will need to be hydrant coverage throughout this site based on code and ordinance. Once again, as we, we receive a, a uh, building permit application along with the site plan, we can work with the applicant to determine what's most efficient for hydrant placement throughout that layout. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Dickman? On item eight, uh, Terry, uh, that all signs are submitted for review and approval. Did you say that uh, they were going to submit a sign plan to us for everything? Or, or, or yes, at a happen? later date. Okay, it'll be a sign plan. Yeah, it'll be a sign plan for all the signage on the, on the building as well as the monument sign. Mr. Seeper. I have a question about the uh, setbacks and dealing with the water and sewer utility as far as the easements and water main. Has that been corrected and taken care of? Yes. Moments before the meeting began, we came to an agreement that the northern portion of Building A would be reduced in, in size so that it would be five feet, five feet south of where it is currently proposed taking off five feet of the building itself. So there's an additional buffer there between the northern portion of the building and the utility easement. Um, and that's, that was acceptable. So the revised plans will show that, that change in the setback and uh, the slight change to the dimensions of the building. Sure. Mr. Chandler, then uh, Alderman uh, Guzikowski. I have a question for the applicant. <clears throat> Name and address for the record. Kelly Gallagher, 3114 Hunters Ridge Way, Heber City, Utah. It was identified that there's a change in the entry and exit from Cal and College to only College. Is that correct? That's correct. Can you provide a little more information on why the change? Yes, uh, the short version is that the Howell Street is a county or state? State. state. Highway State Road, Highway they were unwilling to grant us the ingress. So we had to re-evaluate, disband that approach, and go straight to college. Okay. Thank you. The short version. Thank you. Alderman Guzikowski. Um, well, as you know, I'm at the start of this project, I was on the fence, and I wasn't sure that this was the best fit for this property. And as we walked it and talked it, I, I came on board, and, and boy, am I glad, because you guys really... Uh, again, I agree with everyone else here. This really is a, a good fit. This really is a good-looking property, how you've had this uh, set up and designed. Um, I do have one concern. Um, just south of there, there is a cemetery, uh, St. Joseph's. And the fencing, you're going to have fencing along the, some type of cyclone, or not cyclone, but what are you, you going to have bordering the uh, south side of the property along the cemetery? Have you reached out to St. Stephen's at all by chance? I don't think we have. What is our fence? You have to come up. I, I heard so it's you. a vinyl coverage, yeah, for yeah. that. Yeah, which um, as someone that's a caretaker for a cemetery in Oak Creek, that's a typical uh, fencing painted black that we use. I, if I could just offline, I'll get your card, and then I can um, give it to uh, Father Robert we'll over at St. Stephen. Okay, sure. uh, that'd be great. Mm -hmm. Can I make one statement? Absolutely. I would like to thank, first of all, everyone here. It's been a long, fun battle and a process. I would personally like to thank Carrie because she stayed the course. And uh, minutes before this meeting, I'd also like to personally thank Mike and Ron because the four of us came to a solution and Occam's razor was definitely applicable here. It was a clean, easy fix. And to have their support to all this and to stay the course was fantastic to achieve the result that we have tonight. And I want to thank them personally for it. Concur. I get a lot of credit that I don't deserve. Staff does all the heavy lifting on this stuff. They do all the homework. They, they have these tough meetings that you just talked about, and, and they deserve that uh, accolades because they, they get it done every time we ask them to. Any other questions? Oh, Commissioner Carroll. Um, I guess just for Carrie, based on this... Uh, <clears throat> Well, sun kumbaya and everything's good. Um, <laughs> do we need to change anything with this setback change that was agreed to? He's gonna. He's gonna. You, you, that's he's gonna give it the language. Do. Uh, gonna... Anything else? Just need a motion. 
And the first item will be clarified, or language will be clarified by? Yes. Harry. Strike condition number one. It is no longer applicable. And condition number seven, when we get to it, I will add a statement. Perfect. Need a motion on three or four C. The Dick will make a motion that the plan commission approve the site and building plans for the self storage development located at 6304 and 6340 South Howe Avenue and 137, 147, and 209 East College Avenue with the following conditions. Uh, number one, that all permits and or approvals by the Wisconsin Department of Natural Resources in Milwaukee County for all driveway accesses are received and copies submitted to the Department of Community Development prior to submission of building applications. Number two, that all building and fire codes are met. Number three, that all parking stalls meet required setbacks per the approved conditions and restrictions. Number five, that all elevations are revised to comply with the conditions and restrictions requirement that a minimum of 50% of the visible parameter shall be finished with an acceptable glass, brick, or decorative masonry material. Number six, uh, number five now, that the exterior brick veneer meets the minimum four inch thick requirement per code. And number six, Carrie. That all revised plans, site building, landscaping, lighting details, retaining wall details, et cetera, are submitted in digital and paper formats for review and approval by the Department of Community Development prior to the submission of building permit applications. Revised plans shall show a five foot reduction to the north side of building A as discussed. Okay, and we'll go along with that. Okay, the next one would be item uh, seven, that all signs are submitted for review and approval by the plan commission prior to the submission of signed permit applications. Number eight, that all mechanical equipment, ground, building, and rooftop is screened from view. Number nine, that the final site grading, drainage, and stormwater management plans are approved by the engineering department. Number 10, that all water and sewer utility connections are coordinated with the Oak Creek Water and Sewer Utility. And number 11, that the final photometric and lighting plan is approved by the electrical inspector prior to the issuance of building permits. Secret seconds. Roll call. Dickman, I. Johnson, I. Corral, I. Avich, I. Scooty, I. Corral, I. Secret, I. Good luck, gentlemen. Yep. Uh, motion to adjourn. Corral moves to adjourn at 640. Corral, seconds. Roll call. Dickman, I. Johnson, I. Corral, I. Avich, I. Scooty says absolutely. Zikalski, I. Yes, Corral. Secret, I. Chandler, I. Have a great night. We'll see you next Tuesday evening.